Am I good at sewing? Are you good at sewing? My name is Christine and today I'm going to help you assess your sewing skills so you can answer the question, am I good at sewing? The most effective way to assess your sewing skills is to evaluate how well you can execute a simple pattern because the clean lines and inaccuracies will be more apparent. A nine patch quilt block pillow is the perfect project to assess your sewing skills because it is both easy enough for a beginner to finish and challenging enough to get perfect. If you want to better understand your sewing skills, all you need to do is spend an afternoon making a nine patch quilt block pillow. This project calls for two different cotton fabrics. Now since Fabric selection is one of the most important parts of making a project. Someone who is very good at sewing will be able to pick out very good fabrics for their project. Now it's not only important to pick out the correct material, in this case cotton, because it takes an iron well, but it's also important that you pick out fabrics that look good together. So you want to focus on both the color and the print of your fabrics when you purchase them. When you make a nine patch quilt block, you want to show some sort of contrast between your two colors. And what better color combination than black and white to showcase contrast? But in the past, I've been able to use purple and green to create the same kind of contrast. So go pick out colors that you want to work with. Just make sure that they don't clash because that will ruin your project. You also don't need a lot of fabric for this project. You will be able to squeeze a pillow out of two fat quarters if you want to use a limited amount of fabric. But I always recommend you buy more than you need in case you mess up. Like I did when I measured a stack of squares a quarter inch too short on one side. Precise measurements are crucial for this project because any sort of measurement inconsistencies will show through, but so will perfect measurements. Someone who is good at sewing will not cut corners when it comes to measurements. And sewing is yet another industry where that age old carpentry saying, measure twice and cut once, <laughs> holds very, very true. For this project, you will cut nine four by four inch squares of each fabric. You can use a straight edge ruler, a template, or a rotary cutting set to cut your fabric out. If you are good at measurements, it does not matter what tools you use. Lay your fabric out into a three by three grid, alternating your two fabrics into a checkerboard pattern. Make sure your design flows together cohesively, and if you need to rotate any of your squares, do so now. When you're confident that your design layout looks good, you can separate your pieces into three rows. Sew your fabric right side together with a quarter inch seam allowance. It is very crucial you use a consistent quarter inch seam allowance throughout this project because it does not matter how good your measurements are if you can't sew your pieces together with a consistent seam allowance. After you've sewn all of your squares into rows of three, it is time to press your seams with a dry iron. And make sure you press your seams open and not to the side. Pressing and ironing are another aspect of sewing that are important, and somebody who is very good at sewing never skimps on the ironing and pressing. Your seams should look as clean from the back as they do from the front after pressing. Make sure all your points meet before moving on to the next step. Sew your three rows together to make your pillow fronts and backs. Your rows will have very slight differences between them. You want to make sure that you pay very close attention to lining your seams up at the corners in the center of your pillow. Pin each square together very carefully so the fabric does not warp and show another quarter inch seam allowance. 
press your seams nice and open, and then stack your two pieces right sides together. Line all of your corners, points, and edges up before you pin. Pin each square and corner, leaving the bottom one open. You're going to start sewing halfway into your first square. Sew all the way around the outside of your pillow and stop halfway through the last square, leaving the middle one open. And don't forget to sew one to two diagonal stitches when you pivot around each corner. Don't forget to clip your corners before you turn it inside out. Then turn your pillow inside out and use a knitting needle or a long pair of scissors to push the edges of the corner out. And now you're ready to stuff your pillow. You will find many different kinds of pillow stuffing available for purchase. You can get cotton or polyester, whatever you want to go for is your choice. But I prefer to use bits of thread and fabric that I have saved from previous projects to use as my pillow stuffing. When you stuff your pillows, you just want to make sure that you get the stuffing into the corners really well so that your points look nice and even. If you overstuff your pillow, it might change the shape a little bit. It might look a little too round, but I'm a fan of overstuffing your pillow just a little bit because it will compact a bit with time. And once you're done stuffing your pillow, you are ready to sew the final seam shut. So get out your needle and thread because we're going to hand sew this last seam with a ladder stitch. Most people who are good at sewing will often use both a machine and some sort of hand sewing in most of the projects they work on. Because even though a machine works well for a lot of projects and can help with consistency and speed of sewing, Hand sewing will still give you a nicer finish if you need an invisible stitch. You will essentially be making a running stitch on each side, but crossing over each time. Start your thread from the inside and bring it out exactly where you want the seam line to sit. Cross over to the other side, along the seam line, horizontally make a stitch. So cross back to the first side, about a stitch length over, make another running stitch along your seam line, and keep alternating every stitch. This stitch is called a ladder stitch because your thread will look like a ladder before you pull it tight. When you get to the end and tie your thread off, make sure you thread your needle back through your seam just a little bit so your tail doesn't pop out. And if you need to squish your batting around after you finish your final ladder stitch, that's okay. And now you're done with your nine patch quilt black pillow. But how does this answer the question, am I good at sewing? Well, there are two main components in answering that question. The first one is, does it look good? And ask somebody else about this because you're probably going to be biased. I'll go first. Does this look good? <laughs> Someone who's good at sewing will be able to create a final project that looks aesthetically appealing to the eye. It will have good balance, good contrast, as well as cohesiveness. But if your pillows don't look good, that's okay too. It just means you need to work a little bit on fabric selection and design layout. The second question is a little more difficult, so you'll want to get out a ruler and some scratch paper to write this down. Label your table with 16 rows and the same number of columns as pillows you made. Take your ruler and measure how far apart your corners sit from each other. You will have 16 points all together, four on the front, four on the back, and eight along the sides. Mark each point with any amount of deviation between the two corners in millimeters. And do not round up or down. Use the closest half millimeter measurement. 
Now I'll come up with a standard for what is good or bad sewing before I measure my own so it's not biased. If you scored 16 points or less per pillow, then you are good at sewing because most of your corners and points line up within a millimeter of each other. But unfortunately, if you scored more than 32 points per pillow, you're not very good at sewing and you have a lot of work that you need to improve on, but you can improve on it. Just give yourself a little more patience when you're sewing, make sure you have enough time, and double check all your measurements. All right guys, it's time to see if I am good at sewing. All right, let's tally this up. And the scores are in. I scored 16 and 3 quarters. So I am right at that 16 mark I set for being a good sewer. I probably could have done a little bit better. I had one point that was like 3 millimeters off. So I definitely could have done better with that one. And I think if I worked a little bit harder, I could have gotten a score under that 16 and there's a good reason to make more than one pillow because if you have one that scores a 14 and another that scores a 19 and a half, you will get a better average number than by scoring one that's a little bit better than your normal sewing abilities or one that's a little bit worse. And if you are in the bad sewing category, at least you made yourself a fun pillow. I hope you love your pillows as much as I love mine. Please leave a like and a comment if you haven't already. And subscribe to my channel so I can teach you more ways to assess and improve your sewing abilities. Thank you for watching everyone. I'll see you next week.